are you overwhelmed by starting your rack and unsure which modules to invest into? Trust me, I am going through this as well right now, but I have made a promise to myself to ensure that my journey into Eurorack is not a waste of money. That's why when I was studying before I even bought anything, I came across a lot of warnings by other content creators and YouTubers. So in this video, I will be sharing five of these warnings and common mistakes that people do and how I plan to stay away from them. So hopefully you can also avoid these pitfalls and feel more comfortable starting your Eurorack journey. Throughout this video, I'm also going to show you very short clips of my first patches that I have been doing with my new eight module Euro rack system. So mistake number one, not knowing your goal before you start this. I can imagine that for somebody who's never done audio or is a beginner, it can be extremely difficult because how do you know what you even want to do with it? So for me, the idea to start Eurorack actually came from my job. So I was doing a interactive sound design job for a dance company. And I am super fascinated by all these different technologies around interactive sound design. And one of them is biofeedback. I saw that there is actually existing biofeedback modules. Basically what it means that you can make sound with your skin or with your pulse or so on. And the passion for all this started from the need to uh, expand and my sound design capabilities outside of the box. With more knowledge in sound design has come the need for more deeper, more interesting sound design choices. So for example, I want to start uh, feeding my violin through the setup and start modulating, creating very organic, interesting sounds. Uh, now you can also connect CV into Ableton Push 3, which I have and I use. So I want to ov obviously integrate Push uh, Eurorack, Sins, everything together to follow my Eurorack journey more and see me collecting more of them and using them, please subscribe this channel and hit the bell icon. I think I understand that if you don't have the ideas, then it can be very overwhelming because you don't really know where you want to go with it. If you are more of a beginner and you really are not sure where you want to go with it, then maybe take some other people's ideas follow somebody else and see what they're doing if you're not really sure yet where your personal passions are uh, located Okay, mistake number two, always spending on unnecessary modules. They are not cheap. I've noticed this is not a cheap hobby. So to steer clear from this, I started by purchasing secondhand bundle. Five modules from this uh, that I bought from eBay as a bundle. These are very basics of a synthesis. So most synthesis always has an envelope, filter and LFO. So I already knew that those will be very practical for me. It was about 220, 50 pounds for these secondhand modules. Outside of secondhand world, I was like, okay, what else do I need? I need something that makes sound and I need something that helps me to get the sound out of the system into computer. So I got Make Noise SDO Oscillator and then I got little mini stereo mixer that I can get a stereo signal out into my Ableton Live and I can record whatever I make in here. Good bundle to start with. So if you're not 100% sure where to get started, there was a couple videos that were really helpful for me when I was researching which 
you know, oscillator to have, which mixer to have. So I'm going to link them down below so you can have a look at them as well. Just copy what they are doing in those videos and you'll be fine. So on the top of the modules, obviously, uh, case is a massive investment. So I was uh, very lucky. This was sent to me by Arturia. It's called Rack Brute 6U. This was the case that I was looking for because of the stand, the way that their power module is already attached. So it's ready to go. And also it looks really smart. It doesn't have a case to put like a cover, but I don't really mind it right now. When I start playing live with using module, I'm going to get another like a travel case that has a lid that has a cover on the top of it. So this can be my studio case and then I can have another one for the road. There is a couple more mistakes that we can avoid. Number three is neglecting utility modules. So now I've got a Eurex set up, or so I thought. So I've got no real mixers, no attenuators, and I mean, this was really a poorly thought out setup in my opinion. So utility mod modules are attenuator. Attenuator, example, or mixer. So they might not be flashy, but they are the ones that you really need to make it work. So controlling volume levels, uh, taking audio in, out from things, but they are essential for shaping and sculpting your sound. So uh, don't underestimate them. I'm glad that I got that one from the bundle. And then this one was an uh, investment that I needed to make straight away. It's nice, good mixture like this. <laughs> Uh, mistake number four, ignoring power requirements. And this was one that I was the most scared of. But if you accidentally plug in either one of the other ends in backwards, your system lights up weird, you smell weird smoke, you hear a crack as I seize pop, and your module is dead. It's easy to get caught up with the modules and getting excited about it, but you kind of do need to figure out how much the consumption of your, uh, your modules is and also what your case can take. For this, I got a very early on suggested that I'm going to go to modular grid website and I can plan my grid or any kind of purchases I want to do uh, over there. So I can add my case there and there will be information how much power my case can make to kind of see what the uh, power consumption is. Also, I was warned about connecting power to the case. So really make sure that you're connecting the negatives and the positive correct way around. So minus 12 is always in a correct place. neglecting patch cable management so I've already noticed couple mistakes that I've kind of done is that I didn't buy myself one of those hangers where you can hang your cables because what's happening is that I got sent a, a beautiful goodie bag from signal sounds for cables which are really lovely cables but they are in the bags and in the box right now and I need somewhere that I can easily access them. So my plan is to here buy a hanger where I can hang them and they're color coded. When I'm creating anything, I can easily just pick the right length and add it here. But also from Signal Sounds, I was sent nest tamers and they are little clips. You put them under the screws in the modules, basically allows you to tuck the cables around the case 
so that they're not constantly in front of the buttons. So definitely recommending that. I also found out that using gnarlies instead of screws is so much more easier. You don't need a screwdriver for them. So that means that you can just like use your hand and allows you then to rearrange them how you want uh, very easily. this looks very simple I can already do so much with it I've already used it in tracks to create some bases I want to make a video of myself creating a full track using only ear rack so uh, let me know what other kind of content would you like to see with your rack remember that the conversation continues in patreon and I have the loveliest patreon community ever and because I'm making a track per month uh, so are my patreon so if you want to make more tracks and you want support and accountability for for your music making then please come and join our family have a lovely day and see you again soon